Hi, if you watch my channel, you notice I do a lot of Raspberry Pi projects. Um, the Raspberry Pi is a great little computer. You can do a lot with it in a small package for a small price. Um, this here happens to be a Raspberry Pi Model 4B. Yet one thing I've always felt that the Raspberry Pis missed was an old school floppy drive for reading old floppies. I mean, USB thumbsticks, they just, they just don't have that nostalgic feeling. So I went about taking this Raspberry Pi and building a floppy controller for it so I can hook it up to an old floppy drive out of an IBM 5150. Now there's probably multiple ways to add a floppy drive to your Raspberry Pi. Certainly you could, for example, get a 1.4 megabyte USB floppy. Those things are relatively popular. I'm not aware of any products that use a five and a quarter, you know, the old flexible 360K or 1.2 megabyte disk. I'm not aware of a ready-made product that does that, but it may exist. And there may be other ways to accomplish this, but I ended up using a vintage IC, the Western Digital WD37C65. So here is the data sheet for the WD37C65. This is a great vintage chip. It was originally designed for PCAT compatible uh, floppies. For example, you could, you could control your 360K or your 1.2 megabyte high density floppy. You could also use it to control your 720K floppy or your 1.44 megabyte um, high density 3.5 floppy. Pretty much the whole array of PC drives back in the day could be controlled. With this controller, it's a pretty easy controller to implement. Uh, some of the older designs would have several different ICs, so there'd be like a, a control latch and stuff that's built into this one. Uh, you pretty much wire the microprocessor into one side, the floppy drive into the other, add an oscillator, and you're good to go. I'll show the schematic in a little bit. And then, uh, you know, the data sheet tells you everything you need to know how to operate this thing. Um, for example, you know, here's how you configure your data rates, your MFM or uh, FM for, for your um, transferring the data back and forth. Um, it supports a variety of commands. If we can get down to the command, there's a command table down here. So by sending the appropriate registers across to it, there's a read command, a, read, a write command, um, you read a whole track, read the ID, formatting commands recalibrate that's how you find track zero okay here we have the schematic for my raspberry pi floppy drive controller hat so here we've got the raspberry pi with its usual assortment of gpio pins and here we have a wd 37 c 65 floppy controller chip so pins that are strictly writes i think i have just wired straight across so like the um the read pin that's a control signal from the Raspberry Pi to the controller. It just comes out of the Pi's GPIO, goes into the controller. Same with the write pin, the address pin, the chip selects. The bi-directional pins for the data bus, uh, D0 through D7, I put those through an optional protection resistor. If you watch my videos before, you've probably seen I like to put those protection resistors in uh, just in case you ever have a programming mistake that conflicts about which side is reading and which side is writing. It'll prevent a GPIO from being damaged. So you usually throw in like a 100 ohm, 150 ohm resistor, something like that. So those data pins, they hook up through those resistors uh, to the Raspberry Pi. Once you have the software de debugged fully, you can just wire those straight across and ignore the resistor. Um, I also made the optional ability to hook up the DMA and IRQ pins. Um, I don't actually use those in my design. On this side, we have the 34-pin header that goes to the floppy drive, standard IBM pinout for a 34-pin floppy connector. And then this, if you trace these lines, they all of the lines on the floppy connector hook to various places on the controller. Total of, uh, what, one, two, three, four, five of the lines going to the floppy controller actually need pull-ups. So there's this 10K SIP resistor that pulls up the track zero, the index, the write protect, um, some lines like that. It pulls those up. Uh, that's just hooked in, in line into the, some of those lines. Uh, then we also, we need a 16 megahertz clock to drive the Western Digital Controller. So there's a four pin oscillator, just standard half can oscillator. 16 megahertz runs a clock pin going to the Western Digital Controller. Okay, here is the floppy controller hat. So we have a connector here for the floppy drive, your standard 34 pin connector. We have the Western Digital WD37C65 controller. Here we have some pull-up resistors. Here we have a crystal 16 megahertz uh, oscillator. 
5 volt jack in case we wanted to power it via 5 volt instead of the Pi's uh, USB-C. Um, here in place of the optional resistor pack, this is just a, this gray thing is just a shunt. It's just uh, each one of these is wired straight across. And flipping it over, right here you've got the stacking header that goes on the Pi. So here I have a Raspberry Pi 4B, so you just take the board and you just plop it ever so carefully on top, making sure not to offset the pins, and there, you've got a Pi with a floppy controller. Plug your floppy drive in there. Okay, if you want to follow along and build your own, I have checked in all of the software that I wrote to do this. So I wrote my own uh, floppy drive tool, a command line tool that'll operate the floppy drive, as well as writing a driver. So the tool is actually in this repo. It's relatively short, just takes uh, command line arguments, then calls functions in the drivers. The driver is sitting over here in my um, library repository, and it's considerably longer. As I mentioned before, it's based on the ROM WBW driver, and I took and I translated that from assembly kind of into Python, kind of preserving the functions of the original. Now, one thing, as I mentioned before, the, um, the Raspberry Pi uh, running Linux is not a real-time operating system. Um, it does not guarantee the ability to service interrupts in a timely manner. If you run a process and you have a busy wait, it could get interrupted by Linux. But I did find something that was really useful, and this was this thread on the Raspberry Pi forum by this user, TJ Rob, and he discussed some techniques for isolating a CPU core. So you take and you isolate one of the cores, and then scheduling the process with like the highest possible priority on that core, and then altering the Linux settings so that uh, Linux does not insist on taking occasional 50 millisecond um, slots out of your um, isolated CPU and getting near real-time performance. Now, it's not perfect. Um, you can still get interrupted, um, but these techniques, I, I took and applied those to my driver, and I was able to get reasonable for performance writing a user mode driver to service that floppy controller. Okay, here's my experimental setup. We have here a Raspberry Pi with the um, floppy drive controller hat on top of it. Connected to an old school floppy ribbon cable, comes into the back of this Tandon, I think this is a TM100 drive. This was actually new, brand new when I got it. I got it on eBay, it's a new drive. And this is the same drive that would have been used in the original IBM 5150. So it is a 360K dual sided floppy drive. Okay, so here we have a gold star five and a quarter inch floppy disk. Let's put it in our drive. Close the hatch. And the first thing we're going to need to do is to format our disk. Let me run a format command. Okay, formatting was successful. Now let's write a disk image. So I happen to have a DOS 3.31 floppy disk image. Um, so I'm going to run the disk write command here, and we will write that image to the drive. Okay, we've successfully written it. Now let's take a look at the first sector on the drive. So I'm going to run this tool here, and um, it will just dump the first sector to uh, hex dump. And there we go. That looks correct to me. Um, I can see IBM 3.1. That kind of looks like the boot sector of an MS-DOS floppy ought to work. Um, if we want to go over here, let's go to... Um, Let's go to here and we could do dash S2, ought to give me the second sector. Seems plausible. Okay, now let's try reading and dumping the entire disk image. So I put the dash dash disk parameter there and let's tell it to go ahead and do it. Okay, there we go, it completed, so it read back the image. Now, I have actually tested this by writing an image and then reading it back to a file, then comparing what I read back against what I originally wrote to make sure that there were no errors. And it has tested out correct. I'm able to reliably write and read back images, so I think the tool is working correctly.
Now it is always possible with Linux running on the Raspberry Pi that you might actually have an interrupt service while it's talking to the disk controller and you might miss reading or writing a byte from the disk controller. In that case, the disk controller would generate an overrun error. Sometimes that does happen. It happens a lot more often on the uh, high density disks than on these low density 360k floppies. But if that did happen, uh, then the software would automatically retry. So an error during a read or write transfer is not fatal. The disk controller does reliably report the error and we do reliably retry it and recover. Okay, a few closing thoughts. So I was able to get it to work as is evident in the demo. So the next step would be to write a kernel module for this. Now, previously in my professional career, I did actually do some kernel module development. It was at least a decade ago. So it's been a while since I've done that sort of thing. It's not the funnest. It can be a little bit of a challenge because if you screw something up, then you know your operating system hangs and you, you have to go uh, reboot it uh, the hard way. Um, so that would be the next step. That would take care of the occasional retries that happens if the process gets interrupted in user mode and it didn't improve the performance. So that may or may not be something I'll do down the road. It just really depends on how much free time I have. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.